Um, I just wanted to touch a little bit on um, some of the lessons we've learned um, working with Lionfish and getting everybody involved uh, with respect to partnerships. And it's always in mind of trying to get things done and not pay for it. Okay, so bear, bear that in mind. Anybody know what that is? No? What? No, it's not a red palm mite. Um, anybody else? Elephant. Yeah, a little elephant. Okay. <clears throat> so this is a coral polyp, all right, from the coral reef. And it, what lives inside of it is a tiny little zooxanthellae, a little algae. And they work together, all right? The coral polyp provides the home, and the zooxanthellae stays home and cooks the food. It's just like a, a wife in the 1950s. I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm really just kidding. <laughs> All right, but it's a good partnership. Nobody complains about this partnership. Everybody's happy, one gets a home, one gets something to eat. And this partnership builds all these great barrier reefs, all this protection for the islands. So in some instances, they've built islands, okay? So when we started work on land fish, these are our major partners, the UWI and the National Environment and Planning Agency. And slowly, we started to build our partnerships. Global Environment Facility, the UNEP, the CABI, the MTIZ Project. And we had an organization called Food for the Poor just starting to come in and work to, and work, working with us. Then the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries came on board. And the Reef Organization based in, in Florida, and NOAA based in the US as well, the government agency there. Then more persons started to come on board, the Gulf and Caribbean Fisheries Institute, Montego Bay Marine Park, which is an NGO that runs a marine park in Jamaica, the Portland Environment and Protection Agency, a small NGO in the eastern section of the island, the Nature Conservancy, the Sanders Foundation, so slowly it started to get momentum. Other partners started to come on board, and it was not until after these more government agencies and small NGOs got on board and started to really roll out that we have more the private sector coming on board, the Sanders Foundation, the Rainforest Seafood, the Scotia Bank. This is when these guys started to come on board. All right? And I'll show you a little video in a little while of things that we're doing, have done with Scotia Bank and continue to do. Um, we do training programs, and this is one we have built in partnerships. And the training programs, you know, we've designed a training program out of the MT Isaac project. Um, it covers pretty much everything on Lionfish, from theory to how you cut the spines off, um, how you do research and monitoring, how you even do PR and public education on, um, on Lionfish. Um, the university, because we're funded by 18 countries around the region, have, have, they, they have waived all the professional fees. So you know, uh, all the countries are pretty much paying my salary already. So it's easy for the country to say, can you waive your consultancy fees? And you will say, yes, go ahead. Just take care of its expenses. And we've done it in the Dominican Republic. We got some support from the MTIZ project. Um, from that, we did it in St. Lucia through Sandals. Um, we're coming to Trinidad in June, hopefully, right? June or July. And we're going to Antigua in September. And it's this kind of support, this kind of partnership. All right? The knowledge exists. Okay? We just need to tap into it as much as possible. Um, one of the things that you might find interesting, we talk about building capacity and training and education. Um, the State University of New York, based in a temperate region, and the University of the West Indies in a tropical region, have signed a partnership. And out of this partnership, we've designed a new course called Marine Invasive Alien Species in Tropical and Temperate Climates. Now, it's a, it's a special course, and there's no, nothing that like this exists anywhere else. Um, we're rolling it out this coming up um, academic year in 2014, 2015. It will be run in the sum summer semester, so it will be run summer of 2015. And it's a joint class. The class will be made up of temperate persons and tropical persons. They will come to Jamaica, spend 10 days, and an entire class goes to New York, into Long Island, to their marine facility. And what that helps us is that the, the link between the two regions start to move and the partnership starting to go and the collaboration start to move from there because these are students not only learning from the faculty but they're also learning from each other and that's how we start building partnership because these are graduate level students master students when they're finished collaborations are what scientists depend on a lot of the time so this is one way we think that we could build a partnership build a kind of you know culture 
enhance that culture of working together, breaking those barriers from temperate and tropical areas. Um, we have species in both areas. Lionfish exist in Long Island in the summertime because they get that warm Gulf Stream going up and you have small lionfish. They, are, they have this algae in, up on there that is, is this small in Jamaica, same species, but it is big in the temperate area. So we're looking at the, the, the commonalities between tropical areas, even from a species level, we're talking about legislatively. Um, just to share this quick point with you, there's an invasive swan in that area, in Long Island, a swan. Really, really beautiful, as you imagine swans are. Uh, but it's invasive. It came, they got it from Canada, and they let it go, you know? So it's invasive, and the problem with that is that it's protected by law. You, so they can't do anything about it. It's protected by law. The invasive species is protected. You know, so these are some of the things that you would learn, and these students will learn as well. Um, good example of another partnership. You know, we all contributed our time um, to the development of this um, invasive lionfish book. Um, it was the first book written on anything, and a lot of the work was done through the MTASIC project, through other projects in the region on lionfish, and all of the, the material went into it. And as you can tell from the lower line, all these partners come, came together. We did this book, we printed a few thousand copies, we distributed it towards, um, throughout, throughout the region to coastal managers, and it's available online at that website, gcfi.org. We've got to translate it from English to Spanish to French. It's available on your, you can download a, smart book ver a smartphone version, an ebook version, a PDF, pretty much anything you want, all for free. Again, partnership, right? free partnership. So some key messages. Know your prospective partner. All right? And figure out why you think that this partner would want to get involved. Not why you are involved, you know. What is in it for this prospective partner? Don't focus too much on yourself. You know what you want. But what would they probably get out of a partnership like this? And just focus on that. Carve your pitch just on that. Your, your, your needs come second, all right? Focus on the partner that you want to get involved and lead off with this. So partnership can prove even more valuable than live cash. We all see this in our projects, right? If I were to add up all the money we've gotten from Sandals by going on their vessels every time we want to go and going there to stay and do work for, eat for, for days on end, if we were to add that up, we couldn't pay for it. Partnerships again. It doesn't cost them more. You know, you get more commitment, you get a longer term, term of involvement by getting these partnerships going. Most times it doesn't cost any more money if done right, all right? One of the most important partners for the lionfish for our case are the fishers, it's their livelihoods. I remember a fisherman asking me um, to pay him for lionfish specimens. I said, I must pay you for lionfish specimens? I mean, I, what my work, is, my work is working on lionfish that's causing an impact on your livelihood. I'm not a fisherman. It's not my life that I'm protecting. And it, it took a little convincing, but now they voluntarily give us specimens. All right, we take the data, and sometimes we do the data really, really quickly and give them back. But they are the ones out there talking about lionfish. They are the ones out there, you know, encouraging persons to consume lionfish. Hey, it's safe if done the right way. We train them, you know. They know how to take the spines off. They're not getting stung as much anymore, and they know how to treat a sting. But get them involved voluntarily. Do not pay a fisherman to remove a lionfish to control it. You cannot sustain that. Be very, very careful when you put a bounty on these things, all right? So I'm going to end with this short video. And um, this video kind of encompasses what we've been doing with Scotiabank Foundation. You have Scotiabank here. All right? This is probably a way you can look at it. And we're also partnered with Rainforest Seafoods, one of the biggest seafood distributors um, in the region. And bear in mind, we didn't pay anything for this. Zero. Anything you see on the screen, we paid zero for it, all right?
collaborating with the University of the West Indies, their marine lab, to put on a complete display here of the lionfish. About a year ago, we um, launched our Eat Them to Eat Them lionfish program with the University of the West Indies. Scotiabank launches Scotia Goes Green on Lionfish in support of the University of the West Indies. And at that time, rainforest came on big came on big because it's, you know, it affects all of us in terms of land fish. They came on really to support the cause. And it's now become a great triangle, a great, a great three-way partnership. It's a wonderful addition to be able to exploit this, this predator. A vehicle such as the one we've just got from Scotiabank allows us to move the entire team with all their equipment from location to location in a very nice and neat fashion. So this is going to help us make a major dent in removing land fish, public education about land fish and trying to move forward. Since then we've had a very close collaboration and now we're here at the Rainforest Seafood Festival which is all proceeds are to help raise funds for the Cornwall Regional Hospital. Now us in Western Jamaica rely on Cornwall Regional Hospital which is there to service at least 500,000 people and it needs all the help it can get to do that properly. The Social Foundation has been involved with the Cornwall Regional Hospital since 1998 when we established the hemodialysis unit there. It's a very costly unit and so this opportunity to raise some additional funds to go towards the hospital is something that we thought was good to do. So far we see a lot of people coming out and supporting it so it will just add a little bit more to our contribution to the hospital. Because we got such a great response from corporate Jamaica we can guarantee five million dollars. at the Rainforest Seafood Festival is by far the most popular. We have live cooking demonstrations showing people how to prepare land fish. Me, me can I steam it? Yes, you can. Me can fry it? Anything you want. Okra and cracker? Anything you want. Me sure I share it? Anything. The University of the West Indies Marine Lab has a tour today. We have what's known as the SS Scotia, which is a submarine. And persons of all ages are going through and being educated by the Marine Lab. So you go through the submarine, you're able to see live samples of the lionfish, as well as other sea creatures. When you exit the submarine, you get a taste of the lionfish. I learned a little bit about some of the fishes in our waters especially the lionfish um, that it's really consuming of natural um, fishes and um, we need to eat them or they'll eat all of our fishes. As you know there's a fear of the lionfish but this is a, is a nice introduction. I do like it. I find it to be a very diverse fish. I mean they do it in soups. Um, she had coconut to it now. It's really really good. It's meatier. It's nice. I think I'm a little bit more fleshy and get more for the value of your money if you're buying it. I think it would actually be a nice fish to cook down some okra and carrot and, and, and crackers. Delicious. I like it. The flavor is wonderful. It is really doing a damage to fishery and all of that. So if we can try to find a way to eliminate it, what better way to do that to eat and enjoy it. Since one year of launching this lionfish partnership with Scotiabank, is that we have been able to convince more people to consume lionfish, the benefits of consuming lionfish to our native marine life. And right now, our surveys have been showing that the lionfish population is actually decreasing in many areas around Jamaica, and that's a real positive sign. It shows that local control, meaning small areas where you hit the lionfish very hard, very consistently, and you take them out of the water as frequently as you can, can make a difference. And the numbers are going down, we just need to keep that trend going. As a look for our fans, they know who are eat off the lionfish. Well, you know, and personally, thank you for eating off so much lionfish, boss. So this, this partnership with Scotiabank is definitely making a positive impact. Next week on the tech. All right, so I think that um, it, 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 it kind of shows you that, hey, guess what? We're raising money for a hospital. That's where we started from. So let's use the, the lionfish to raise money for the hospital. I think we raised about 7,500 US dollars just by having persons pay a dollar, two dollars going through that submarine for the day. All right, and then Scotiabank matched that and then donated that to the hospital. All right, so you can use this thing. And remember, you, know, those, you saw those persons speaking about lionfish afterwards. These are regular persons. One, just learning about the lionfish, two, just tasting it for the first time. And they were saying very correct things. They were on board, they understood what was going on. So we tie in the public education and it's a partnership. Again, 
we paid nothing for that zero all right so th this feature and we did one last year as well with them when we launched the program it was shown in the banks every single time for six months seven months you could stand up in line in any scotia bank all across jamaica and you will see it running so while you're waiting in line you're learning about the line fishing you probably see it three times before you you reach the top of the line but these are some of the things that you can be creative Yes, the project is ending now and the live cash is probably ending now, but you've built a partnership. Scotiabank doesn't see an end inside for any partnership like this. And that's where you can look at building partnerships for any invasive species. Figure out why the partner wants to get involved. All right? Thank you very much.